Okay, so welcome to the second part of uh, the PHP basics on uh, our web development course. So what are we going to jump in today is uh, relatively straightforward. Um, we have the topic left of uh, how to interact with uh, databases. Now, databases is something that, uh, if you give me a second here, Okay, so if you remember the curriculum, then uh, basically um, we're right here now with uh, PHP. So we have already talked about um, uh, databases in um, you know a, a re relational devices, uh, NoSQL environment and uh, on a very high level talked about that. If you haven't seen that, um, it, it does make sense to basically look at the playlist and um, you know jump back on that topic uh, or to reiterate. Uh, what we want to do here, though, is um, basically now saying like, okay, let's interact with a database um, for the first time. So what we want to do is basically uh, jump back into our PHP. So let's uh, let's create a simple index and uh, start from there. Uh, so let's make a new PHP file, and I'm going to call this index, right? So I will not require a browser for this one, but uh, the principle applies um, always, right? You have um, a couple of, of possibilities to interact with the database. I'm going to use a database wrapper that is part of the Neo3 framework, as that is something that we're going to use in our project later on. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to require it by composer. So open up your, your uh, terminal. So that's uh, CMD in window if, if you don't use um, or, or the terminal in your VS code or whatever you're using. Uh, I'm using the uh, PHP Storm uh, from JetBrain, as I mentioned, uh, uh, well, quite extensively, probably. I'm a big fan. Um, so I am going to run Composer. And again, if, if uh, you don't uh, have that installed, if this doesn't work for you, if you just run Composer, uh, if this set tells you it's an, it's an unknown command, then uh, go back to the setup video and make sure that you have that uh, installed correctly and everything works fine. So uh, what we want to do is we're going to do uh, composer require. And uh, what we want to require in this case is uh, neon three apps DB that stands for oops, it stands for database. And um, basically, it's going to then start to give us this in our vendor folder. That uh, just have to give it a second. There we go. Okay. So you can see that it created now our composer JSON. That's the same thing that we used for the templates already. So that should look quite familiar. Um, and then we have basically the vendor folder, and this is our uh, th uh, you know you know three apps folder, and there's our DB in here. So that's how we're going to interact with it. So the general setup of to use Composer is basically to make sure that you have um, your auto loader required. Um, so for us, that's going to be vendor. Um, auto load PHP. And I think that we uh, said like, let's, let's make sure that that's defined correctly. So we always have that going for us, uh, regardless of where we are. Uh, in that case, we basically say uh, path. And then that's the uh, concatenation in, in PHP. So add, uh, and then vendor auto load PHP and just make sure that uh, that is also a understood as a folder. So this will basically return the current folder we're in. So in that case, it's uh, our, um, our DB database. But of course, in an online uh, scenario, or when we deploy it, this could be somewhere else. Um, so now we have that loaded. So let's make sure that everything works fine. Um, but let's first basically set up a basic database that we're trying to connect to. So what we now have at our disposal is um, and we already introduced working with uh, classes. So let's basically start creating a new file. Um, and I'm going to um, call that file transaction. And oh, that's the name of the class. So let's keep that capitalized. Uh, the file name is transaction. And uh, I can basically just go with with this. So here we have um, transaction. 
And what we want to do at this point is we want to use um, the Neon 3DB, right? This, this should kind of auto populate for you so that it, just so you know how namespacing works, um, this is basically something that is defined in the DB app itself, right? This is, you don't really have to look at this, um, but just so you know uh, what's, what's going on. So this class has a particular constructor. Uh, we also know about that. So in the function construct, what we want to do is uh, we want to start by setting up uh, the DB environment, right? So uh, as you can see, we have a couple of uh, properties that we can't set. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to set the environment. Now, regardless of what you use, let's make an array in here. Oh, I don't know why that's so ugly. Um, you will require a couple of localhost, a couple of values. Let me clean this up a little bit so it looks better. Okay, here we go. You will require a couple of values uh, in order, oops, in order for the database to um, basically be set up. So even in the native implementations with with uh, MySQL I or PDO, uh, this is information that basically is required. So first is the host of your database. So I assume that you have a uh, MySQL database installed locally. Um, we that means in, if you're running something like like uh, Zamp or WAMP. Um, that you need to start those services now and also make sure that the uh, SQL server is running. If that is the case, I have, I have, uh, I'm using a Ubuntu system. So for me, that's, that's uh, basically always on. Um, I am going to make sure that I'm connected to a particular database. So let's, uh, let's actually quickly do something here. And uh, you know what, I'm going to get you something to copy and paste. Um, so let's first take care of the connection, then we see how, how this works. So it's a new data source that I'm going to configure uh, in my SQL. And if you work with something like Workbench or, or um, HiDDB, I mean, this will look pretty much the same. So um, you have the host, then the user, which in most cases defaults to root, um, but uh, that uh, depends basically on the installation you have. This is also the default port, so this will normally be the same. And then we have a particular password uh, that you can set at installation. And if you're running something like XAMPP, this will simply be empty, right? There's no risk in it because it runs on your local computer, uh, no risk uh, um, of, of, of access from, from somewhere else. Uh, and this database doesn't exist yet, so I'm just going to test the connection here. Okay. Invalid time zone. Oh, that's probably we just had a. Uh, I see. That's actually an interesting problem to have. Um, wait, what did it say? Lost it. This is really interesting. Okay, uh, so so we just switched from from winter to summertime, and this should normally not happen, uh, but nonetheless, it's interesting to debug something. Um, so server time zone is something that we probably want to identify here. Let's see if that is set somewhere. Uh, it doesn't look like it though. Can I sort this? I can. Server time zone. Here we go. So that is not set at all. And I should be at oof minus four. Actually, I need to Google that quickly. If you apologize. Um, um, I'm at minus, yeah, I'm at minus four. Okay. Um, what I will do for ease of access now is I'm going to set this to UTC, which is basically zero. And uh, the problem 
uh, the reason why I'm doing that is um, because I um, later on we will notice that it makes sense to calculate across different uh, time zones if we basically say, well, the, the time zone we're going to compare against is um, zero. Um, I'm actually not sure if I can enter that as a string, but we will find that out when we test again. That looks good. And uh, now we're basically connected to the time zone. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is something that you can copy and paste, is I'm going to create a database. Um, and I'm going to call it um, um, yeah, I'm going to call it PHP test. I'm going to do that. Um, and the command. So this is SQL now. This is uh, something that we haven't talked about yet. So uh, for now, I just want you to copy and paste it. And I'm also going to create a table in there, but uh, we can kind of like do that with with, um, you know, onboarding tools. So so that's the only thing that I'm basically going to do right now is I'm going to run this. And as you can see, if I open up the database, uh, and actually get rid of the uh, let me just look at that one. Um, so what I have here is a um, is now the, a new database. And if I expand that, you see, it's, it's pretty much empty. So what I can do is and this is what I'm going to do now is first of all, I'm trying to connect to this database. So this is the host, um, then we have the user, and you remember that was root. Um, and then we have um, the the port default, so we don't need that. Uh, and then I need to set my password. Now, in my case, that's going to be um, not chatting Yeah, is that correct? And, um, and so we also need the database name because I can actually have with this multiple databases. Uh, so in that case, it is uh, PHP test. Okay, so the reason why why um, this basically now is, um, you know, highlighted as as a warning is because this could potentially fail, this connection could fail. So I'm basically going to try this. Okay, so try catch block in PHP looks like this, that I simply write try, then execute my code in here. This is pretty much the same if, if we're later dabbling into JavaScript and so on, you will basically see the same. And then I say catch. And so this returns a particular a DB exception. Do you see that? It's not a regular exception. So that's what I'm going to throw is uh, the DB exception, and I'm going to call it E. Right, and then basically, um, this is going to in, in my case, this little bit of an ugly solution, but right now I'm going to completely die on this and say no, if that happens, I said, uh, I would say, um, could not connect database. Okay, so this is this is what's happening now now transaction class. So if I basically uh, create a new instance with new transaction, um, this is going to run and try to connect us to, to set database. Well, let's try that out. So here's my index. So I should be able to basically say, okay, um, I want to use the transaction, right? Now, what you see here is that um, I don't have any kind of, of logic of namespace here. That's some, a topic that we will go into um, a little bit later. Um, so what I need to do first of all right now manually is to include transaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to require a path and then transaction PHP to make sure that this script can actually access this other file. Now, once that's done, I have the possibility to basically uh, use uh, whatever is in here. Right? So let's do this and say like, okay, this is my transaction. And I'm going to sign this and we remember that new transaction. And basically now this automatically uh, creates an instance of this transaction. And since we do have a constructor, uh, what will happen is that it's trying to set up the um, database connection automatically. And if that's not the case, then we will get an error. So we can actually pretty much find that out uh, by simply, you know, running this. So what I'm going to do right now 
is I'm simply going to say uh, PHP index.php, right? In which case, so I'm in this scenario. You can also run this in the browser if you want to, but, but I want to basically stay in one window today. Okay. And here you basically see that we have an issue. So this threw an error that's not completely unexpected. Uh, it's a warning that, you know, I mentioned up here. So this path basically, uh, you know, gets us this out, right? Okay, this is our actual path. And as you can see, it just starts with transaction here. So of course, we would need to say like, no, 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 that is in, in the database and then slash transaction.php, right? So if we run that again, we see everything's fine. Now we don't have any kind of output uh, because uh, the transaction went just fine. So if I change something, and that's why I set it to password here, uh, and let's say, okay, um, I make changes to, um, or I have wrong credentials in here, then what would happen now? Oh, it's interestingly nothing. Um, let's just still connect PHP test. Uh, I actually did expect an output here. Let's try this again. No. Okay, let's, uh, let's try the following and basically here so quickly do a echo test and see if this actually causes any kind of issues or if this just not throws anything. Ah. It's here. Okay, so this runs. And this runs as well. Ah, and I know why that's the case. Sorry, that was a little bit confusing. Um, so what's happening is um, we haven't, there's actually no transaction happening. The only thing that we actually did is um, setting up the environment there's but but it doesn't create any kind of active uh, connection um, to the database. Um, so so what's what's happening now is that the DDB class now has basically the variables that we're going to use um, in order to to invoke a transaction, if if we we basically make one. So what we probably want to do here at this point is say, Okay, uh, this is something that we want to use um, in our index directly for, for now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return db. Right? So on fan constant db, is that not? Uh, I need to basically return it to itself, which is uh, also not exactly what I want to do. Let's, let's keep things clean, actually. Um, let's, let's basically write our, our transactions in the transaction uh, controller, um, a class, sorry. So here we basically now have, have uh, we just invoked the, um, the, the class, and the only thing that we really have here is a constructor that basically sets our environment variables. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a new function. Um, that is basically going to say, um, let's um, create a table. So as of now, and I'm going to give this table name. What we're doing until now is basically that uh, we're just connecting to an empty database. So what I want to do is I want to use the DB class to actually create um, a table with a particular name. Okay, and this is something that that if you look at how that works, and again, you can use your your, um, your MS Workbench, or you can use your, your Heidi and so on, I'm going to use directly what I have here. So how does it look like if I oops, if I ugh, why does it do that? Um, if I create a new table, so this will basically show you how the actual SQL script will look like. So here I say create table table name. Uh, in that case, I want to have, uh, let's say notes. And uh, notes, as you can see, has no columns whatsoever. So there are a couple of things that we want notes to have. 
And uh, the first thing that we are concerned about is an ID. And the ID, let's first use um, maybe auto increment uh, primary key. This is basically uh, something that will allow us to identify the rows of um, our, our database. And we've talked about this uh, already. Uh, that will enable me to make uh, very fast queries when, when I know what exactly I'm looking for. So, and then basically here we say, uh, let's give this a title. Now the type here, as you can see, it, it defaults to int. And what we really want here is a varchar of uh, 255. So that basically means uh, any kind of character um, according to the coalition, so in, in our case, UTF-8, um, and a total amount of characters of 255. Okay. And that's what we want to do. And then we basically also want to say, so those are notes. Uh, here's our content. And now let's just assume that that's going to be a text, right? That has a little bit of, of more, um, uh, maybe the notes need to be a little bit longer, but, but not too long. It's just a simple app. So what I'm also going to prepare for is uh, basically an insert date. So I want to kind of capture when nodes were taken. And that's going to be a date time. Actually, that's going to be a timestamp um, because we don't really manually want to do that. Uh, and we're basically going to say the default is current timestamp. Uh, there we go. And that's good with us. And then the next thing that we're going to do is a delete date. Now, the reason why we want to have a delete date is because sometimes uh, when we delete something, we don't really want to delete it. Uh, we just basically want it to be out of context, right? But there might be a functionality where we say like, well, we would like to see the stuff that we deleted and maybe decide differently and so on. So we're not really going to throw it away from the database. We're just going to hide it for the client if you want so. And so this is just daytime and that's fine. Now, as you can see, this is what's actually happening. So here I say create table notes and um, then with an ID that's an integer auto increment, which basically means um, it's going to, if I have a new row, it's going to just add a number to the ID that was was uh, put in last. It has a title with white char and, and it can be null, so it's nullable. Uh, it has content, um, it has an insert date that defaults to the current timestamp if I don't set it and it has a delete date, which is null. Um, everything that's nullable will default to null automatically. Um, but of course, I could say, um, I could say null, uh, and, but that, that's simply not necessary, right? I, I don't need that. If it's nullable, it means it doesn't need a, need a, um, uh, a value. So, um, and that's our primary key here is, is ID. That's uh, also important, and uh, that, that's the way that that's written here is is also like you can you can do, simplify that down, but you will see that according to what you're using. Now I'm going to execute that script now, and as you can see, um, all of a sudden I have this table notes. Okay, so in order to basically facilitate that, actually let's do something. Um, add note. And here's a note, uh, title and note, uh, content. Um, and here we say function, we make it making like, like all the CRUD operations now, right? Is, um, get note. And then I say by ID. And then I create a function uh, get all. I don't require anything for that. Let's just rearrange the code style here a little bit. And um, then I probably need a function uh, delete note by ID. And I need a function. Update note. And 
that basically takes um, ID node title and node content. Now there's a lot to be said um, uh, ab about this kind of structure that we're doing here. So in reality, what we would do rather than having a transaction, this would be what we would place in models, right? We talked about model view controllers a little bit. So um, we basically now just you know write everything uh, in, in one file. Normally the database layer itself, also referred to as an ORM, uh, would be somewhere else than, than the model. So we would have something that's specifically for notes, but since it's the only thing we're gonna do, I wanna keep it as simple as possible. So uh, basically now we have our CRUD operations, so we can add a note, we can uh, get a note, we can get all notes, uh, we can delete notes, and we can update notes, and uh, none of that functionality exists, as you can see. So what do we do about that? The first thing that we probably want to do is we want to add a note. So, and as you can see, it requires the note title and the note content. So we're going to use our now invoked database, and um, in that case, Let's do the ask. So the first parameter of the ask is the table name, which is notes. So so that is that is you know according to the wrapper. I, I basically you know what let's uh let's start differently. Uh, so the actual SQL for that, uh, and I can do this with a DB wrapper when I start with a greater than, is insert into notes. So then the table name. And so I can basically now, or you know what, I'm going to show you a simplified way of, of uh, marking that up, because it's easier. Um, set, and then uh, you remember that we have a title content, right? So set, cont uh, sorry, let's start with title, title to, and that needs to be a string. And actually, let's start with something that I don't recommend. Yeah, you will see why in a second. That's so in a string and they say no title. And we're going to say content to no content. Now listen, if, if, if you're watching this video and, and, and now start typing and so on, please don't do that at this point. This, this has a lot of security issues. We're going to get into that in, in, a, in a second. Um, so stay with me here, please. That's, um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people actually do this in production, and that's, that's very risky. So we basically added a note here. And so what I know from, from inserts commands of, of, of the ask is that this is going to return uh, the, the actual ID. But we're not, we're not concerned about that as of now. So um, let's, let's basically do this and assign this and then basically say, or you know, we'll make it easy, even easier and say return db ask. So what happens here now is this is the actual SQL, right? So we say, okay, uh, get into notes, uh, a, a new row, right? That sets the title to the note title and the content to the note content. Do you see that? So this already works. So if I were to say, okay, transaction, add note, um, test title, oops, test, geez, okay, um, my first note. And if I were to execute that, um, and then basically look at, at how my database looks like now, I could see that, okay, I have now my first ID with test title, um, with content, my first note, and the in insert date was placed automatically. And I do not have a delete date because it's not deleted. Okay. Now, why did I say, please never write like that? Well, it has a particular reason. And that reason uh, is called SQL injection. So it is possible now for me, if I understand how this is inserted, to change the values of either this or that in a way that would allow me to change what is executed against the database. Okay, this is raw user input. 
right? If you, if you imagine, I mean, not here if I'm writing it there, but if, if you imagine that, that this comes maybe from from um, from a front end where, where, you know, like a form where you post uh, or an app or whatever, uh, then that is a highly dangerous way of, of writing it. So the way to get around that is to basically use something that is referred to as prepared statements. Now in a prepared statement in pure SQL, and you will see that in, in uh, you know, like some wrappers like, like PDO, you would basically have something like, um, let me explain that maybe like this. You would write something like, okay, uh, insert into and then your table name. Uh, and then you would say, set uh, title, question mark, uh, content, question mark, right? So you see that and in a prepared statement that then requires a different, a different so that those would be values. And that's normally an array that would basically say something like this. So this is in that case, two strings. And no, that's not even how it's going. That's a, the name there. Well, I've so there's an, mm, let's simplify this down even more. This is don't this is not something I want to want to explain right now. Um, and then you would basically say uh, note title, note content, and then here you would place it in in the according wrapper that way. So what that would do is to replace uh, no title in a secure way where the first question mark is and the second value where the second question mark is. Okay. Now, in in um, the DB ask, we have simplified this process, because it is difficult to basically first of all, you need to, you uh, should, I mean, even though it defaults to string, in our case, it would be fine. But you should know what kind of type you're dealing with here. And secondly, you um, need to be careful with the right kind of order of things, right? Otherwise, imagine we would turn this around and all of a sudden the title would be the content and vice versa. So and in more complex scenarios, this can become a problem. So what we did here um, is basically say, okay, um, let's get rid of this. And instead say, um, title. And here say content. And then as a second parameter to the ask, I'm going to give it an array, where I basically define this, you know, what is what. So then I say title is uh, no title. And content is no content. Let's get rid of that. Now this will still do exactly the same thing. So um, let's let's basically try this out. So in here, I basically say test title two. Uh, and here I say my second note. And if I now run this, and look at the database again, I will see that this runs just fine. So what I have done now is I have secured the user input, right? So this is now basically a prepared statement and those uh, values will be executed against it. And you can see the title is, is whatever I do here in those curly braces. And you see content is how I named this variable. And you will notice that uh, I don't use any kind of quotes here because the, all of that is taken care for me um, in the um, prepared statement. So if we take this out and say, well, let's define this here right and say, sure. Um, this is our um, note. Oops, I don't know why I did that. This is our note. And then here we basically simply say note. Um, then, then, you know, it's a little bit of a cleaner markup. But um, this goes even further. And this is also something I don't need to write. Since I you can imagine if if this is named the same way title and content, then this is a little bit repetitive. Right? So if, if I'm if I make sure that that this has the same name as my actual field, then why would I write it like that? 
So the DB ask has a very simplified way of, of saying like, no, we're actually not going to uh, write, you know, native SQL. Instead, the first parameter is always the table name notes. Okay. And the, the second parameter is always um, the, um, the array of, of content. Now, if I had a third parameter here, then it would automatically be an update because then I would apply a condition. But since since I, I want to write an insert, this is literally all I need to do. So I mean, think back a couple of minutes and see how like like how, how we simplified the complexity of this. So this now basically inserts into notes, um, something that has okay, title, which is secu a, a secure uh, way of, of handling the title and content. So let's try if the, out if this still works. So this is our title three. And this is my third note, and then execute it. And if I open this up and uh, reload, you can see that I have a third line now. So everything still works like a charm. Okay, so this is now all I need to do. And in the same way, we're going to use simplified markup for all of these. So the first thing that I probably want to do here is is get all right. So basically generate what we see here. Uh, now in, in, in our tool, or in our workbench or whatever you work with, and basically get that into PHP. So what I'm going to write here is to say, okay, so return. Um, and then again, the DB class, and I'm going to say, um, well, let's first do it like this, right? First, the native way. So I'm going to say, uh, select, and then I'm going to use a star for everything. So an asterisk, um, from notes, right? There are no, ex no, no particular values I, I want here. The only thing that I'm concerned about is, well, or let's do it like this for now, get, get all. And so here, basically, let's uh, not execute this. And rather than that, say transaction, get all. And so it returns to so let's sign this. So all notes equals transaction get all. And um, what I'm prone to do here is I'm simply going to print that quickly. So we can see what's going on here. So if I now execute the script, what I get is basically the let me actually get this a little bit bigger for you is the content of the table that I'm querying here. See that? And that's basically it, right? So first note, second note, third note, that's I, I get all of this out. So as, as an array, and by the way, that's something that uh, uh, is something that the, the DB defaults to. So fair enough. But what if I do the following and say, uh, let's assume we're not there yet. But let's assume that the first ID was deleted by now. So uh, I'm just going to assume that yep, that's what's happening. Oh, come on. I thought you kind of like do that for me kind of nicely. Uh, can I not hit? Yeah, fair enough. I change that and then basically have to execute it against the database. And if okay, so now this is deleted, if I were to run this again, I find that the first one is actually supposed to be deleted. Right. So I have a condition to say like, well, please only get me those rows that aren't deleted. So that do not have a delete date, or in other words, have a delete date of null. So what I'm doing here is okay, select everything from notes, where delete date, and then is null. Okay, so I'm executing this again. And what you can see is now I only get two results out. So I now have a condition of what I want to do. This is very different should, should you basically have dabbled into into um, uh, NoSQL environments first for whatever reason. Um, so we haven't indexed the if you can remember that uh, the only uh, key that we set was an ID. Right, but we can still query on that. 
um, that there's no no issue with with you know querying on any of that. So so for most other keys that that aren't the primary key, uh, indexing is, is more or less of a strategical thing that helps you uh, you know get performance out and, and have certain uh, functionalities connected. Um, but uh, nothing that we need to get into at this point. So the only thing that you need to worry about is a primary in key, as uh, was our primary index, and uh, the rest is basically um, something that I'm just going to declare optional for now. So, um, but again, okay. So this is again the, the native. So I can run this, right? This is exactly what I could run against uh, the database. So if I basically say, hey, get me a um, uh, get me console here and execute this. Then as you can see, I get exactly the same result here. It's basically what's happening here, right? So here, here now I see that, okay, this is the result that of, of the database uh, query. So, and of course, um, I don't want to write that either. So what I'm going to do instead is say, no, let's simplify this down. So let's use a simpler form of writing this. So in the DB ask, again, the the uh, what I would or actually let's not even do this. Let's have an easy markup. And in an easy markup, the only thing that I really require so the first parameter is um, my selector string. So this could be something like uh, notes dot ID and notes dot um, title and whatever I need. I'm going to simplify this down as well and say, well, just give me anything. Okay, from from notes, all, all fields. And then, as the second parameter, I'm going to have my condition array again. And in that case, it's pretty simple. I, um, I want to have the delete date, where the delete date is empty. Or, if you're familiar with regular expressions, simply without delete date. And as you can see, if I execute it again in our uh, terminal here, this got, gets us exactly the same results, those two, two results. So that's all, whoops, where are we? This is all I really need to write. Right, this is all I really need to write. Now, um, again, we see those those kind of try and catch blocks here with, with the um, exceptions. So the you remember when we set that up and, and, and it, it uh, didn't indicate when it went wrong? Let's now try this out and basically say, okay, let's connect to a database that doesn't exist. So as you can see now, basically the the uh, it, it drops an arrow and it already says like check defined. So so it's probably um, a problem with, with uh, the connection of the database. It knows that. But the reason why it even throws an arrow here is because here we're not trying and catching. Okay, so that's probably something that, that we, we should do. So let's test this with the get all and basically say, okay, try. Um, and then we say this, right? And then we say catch uh, db exception e. And here I'm going to call something else and say this print error. Um, e get messaged. Okay, there, this method doesn't exist yet. So let's quickly create that. And that should be like, pr pretty much a high up uh, function here, probably, uh, where we say, print error, error. And, and here, we basically gonna var dump and die and say, um, error. Right. And, and again, I'm just showing you this, you would handle this differently in a real life scenario, because you probably want to react on, on something not working. But uh, so if we do that now, then the error message kind of changes. And we now get a string um, that uh, basically says, okay, uh, can connect uh, with given values. And uh, so it those values in that case are uh, redacted. And uh, that is uh, basically because we're handling the, uh, whatever something contains a password, that's that's the behavior that we, you will find, right? So if it, I do this again, now it's the correct connection, I get my output again, and everything runs fine. 
Okay, so now we have a get all and we have a add note. And now let's try to get a particular note. Okay, by ID. So it's a little bit like what we've what we've done here. So what we can do is basically say in, in the simplest terms, uh, we can basically more or less just copy and paste this and say we have another condition now to add, right? So it's not only that is not deleted. No, additionally, it is where the ID is ID. So the given ID. Okay. So it now basically returns um, just one single, um, in that case, it must be one single because ID is unique, um, one single uh, row. So if I go back here, and instead of get all notes, um, I say one note, and that is transaction, um, get note, and let's say I want to have the one with the ID one, Oops. and basically print that, then this is what's going to happen. No, oh, we get an empty array. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I actually have an empty result. Uh, that was uh, the wrong choice here of ID. So you probably remember that we deleted ID one. So uh, that will not get us anywhere. Uh, let's get the second out. And then you see, okay, now we get it. Um, so now we basically see that uh, we can target a particular um, um, what's it called? Um, uh, note in, in our case, right from from uh, this table. So let's basically finish up all the, the CRUD operations here. Uh, so we have to get all we have to delete note. Uh, this is something that we also basically do the same here. So you do remember that um, oops, You do remember that um, the, um, the the db ask right and it said like it can have a, a uh, if it had a third condition, then it would update. Uh, so what we can do here is to say okay notes. And so this would be our update uh, condition. So we're going to set. Actually, let's you know what let's do this in pure HTML uh, in pure. Uh, SQL again. So let's do ask. So the actual SQL again would be, um, oh no, sorry, update notes set delete date two, and then now we're going to use a function. So the the SQL function now is uh, going to return the the current uh, timestamp, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to set that to to basically right now, whatever the time may be. Um, so now and then we're going to say where. So where we're going to do this operation, which row, uh, where ID equals, and then simplify one step here, ID, right, and then I say, okay, ID is ID. Right, so this is what we could write. And as you can see, I used the same kind of setup to okay, so update notes. So this is the table we're targeting, set the delete date um, to now where the ID so in which row where the ID is um, equal to the ID I'm giving it. Okay. So if this is something I'm, 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 I'm doing, I can simplify that with with the DB ask and say, well, uh, so again, the first one is the table that we're targeting. The second one would basically be uh, what what is um, what we're targeting. So we have a simplified way you can do this if you want to. But in the DB ask, if we just have a dot, it, it uh, means now, right? This is kind of like, okay, uh, at, the, at the current point in time. And then we have a third parameter that basically does the same thing that we would do above and say, well, where ID is ID. Okay. 
So let's think this through. Um, if we call delete note, then this should not, um, uh, then basically this should set the ID that we're giving it to delete it. So you remember that, okay, we're going to get this note and this note, the second one is still in existence. So we're going to have this output. So let's assume that before we're going to ask for ID two, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to delete the node two, which means at line 14, when it tries to get the node, it should not exist anymore. So we should get an empty output now. So instead of this, we just have an empty output. Let's try this out. And as you can see, it's an empty array. So node two for doesn't fulfill our requirement anymore of not being deleted. And we can basically see also how that looks like. So both of them now have a uh, timestamp, right? And that is um, basically everything we, we need to do now. So the thing that we probably want to do next is, okay, so what if I want to update a particular note? And what if I want to find a particular note? So first, let's update a particular note, right? And say, okay, um, that's actually pretty much the same as well. So let's uh, take this blo code block again. And let's first do it natively. So we understand what's happening. So in pure SQL, it would be uh, update notes set um, set title is title and content is content. Does this look familiar? And then the ID we need for the condition, well, which, oops, which do we want to um, update? Um, so I can basically say, Oh, come on, where ID equals ID. Okay, and then my second parameter, I would basically say, okay, um, so here I have my ID, oops, ID is ID, and um, I'm doing this title is note, note title and uh, content is no content. Okay. So that would basically be how I would write it. So and then in, uh, this would be a question mark here, of course, and you can see here, for example, that I can disregard the the order. So if you're using PDO and so on, you got to be careful with that. Um, because this needs to be in the right kind of, of order in order to enable you uh, to set in the right value. So ID must be last in this case. Now what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to simplify it down. And I, we already did this basically here, right? So the delete note is in, actually an update, right? That's exactly what's happening. So I instead of saying, well, you know, set the new delete date, let's instead uh, put this basically here and say, okay, so title would be our note title and uh, content would be our note content. And that's all we would need to do. So we should now should be able to update a particular note. So let's just see, we now have only test title three left and it's called my third note. So what I'm going to do here is, so this I don't need anymore. Um, we're going to get that one just for, to look at it. And but what we're gonna do here now is I'm gonna say update note number three. And the note title is going to be, um, third and my node content is going to be new updated content. So I'm going to have this transaction after after I got this transaction, I retrieve um, the note number three, and I'm going to look at the output. 
So let's check that out. And as you can see, I have the ID number three, um, and it's the title is third, and new updated content is exactly what I have here. If I look at the database, then you can see it is stored correctly. And so that's basically um, that's basically what we want to do. Now we have set up this uh, uh, database here correctly, right? So what we can do, since we have now through the inheritance of transaction PHP, um, and and we have the the um, the DB now inc included correctly, what we can actually do is to say uh, we can use direct transactions outside of that. So I want to find something. So let's just say what I'm actually going to do is instead of get the note by ID, what I do want to do is I want to use the DB. And the reason why we write it like this here, and like this here is because of the difference in, in here we use it, do you see that? So that's basically just an, um, you know, a way of, of, of making my life easier when I write it, All right? It's like, okay, this is the so-called namespace that we're triggering. So now this namespace, um, and here I'm going to say, okay, easy. And what I wanna do is I wanna select uh, everything from notes, right? Where, and now I'm going to say, um, where title, I'm not going to do it by ID now, where title is um, third. So now I'm basically searching for something, that's hence the name queries, I'm searching for something in the table. So whatever, whatever uh, row, so look at back here, has a title of third, which will be this one, so we're not going to change anything in the output, um, give it to me and return it as, as an array. So if I run this again, you will see I get the same kind of output. So instead of basically using the transaction, I now basically ask the database directly for uh, all nodes containing title third. Now note how we don't have, um, we're not accounting for a delete date. So if I were to say, okay, um, this is deleted, and then run this, I would still get the same output. Oops, right, well, in that case, I would either way. Okay, I still get the same output, but it does have a delete date, right? So I can now basically, uh, of course, I can ask for for deleted entries, and because I here I didn't specify that I only want to have um, um, undeleted um, um, uh, rows here. I'm just saying like, well, whatever has third. So that's something that, that you need to kind of like be a little bit aware of if you're working with those kind of stamps. And, uh, but in theory, um, we already covered now most of the CRUD operations, right? So CRUD stands for create. Okay. We have that add note, um, create, um, uh, read just the, the get. And, uh, here we, we have get all and get note and we probably, um, could think about something like uh, get note by title, right? And basically simplify that a little bit. And if you're working with this, I'm just, you know, going to basically, this is more or less a little bit of, of um, how should I say it, uh, to give you some ideas of how to work with it. So what I can do now here is, of course, I can say, okay, um, so I'm basically, I'm still selecting everything from notes. And here I'm just going to say where title is title. And now instead of having it here, right, I basically now can say, okay, from now on I can reuse this and say, uh, get note by title third. And so here we respect the, the delete date, right? So, so we will not get any kind of result here if I'm asking for it. So let's change that again and say, okay, this is actually undeleted. Uh, however that works. Uh, not like that, I guess. No, there we go. Okay. Now, and now I, I get it again because it's, it's undeleted, right? So now I have the possibility to be, simply say, get note 
by title. And um, that is basically how I interact with, with uh, databases and what you will do in models um, b before we go into transformers and basically abstract that even higher is you probably already noticed that a lot of this is relatively repetitive. So for now that makes sense, but in a later session, we will basically go a little bit into um, how to simplify that even further. Um, but uh, basically you already get the um, idea of it. And that is uh, everything I wanted to achieve now. So again, create, we have that, the uh, get note. Um, then we have, uh, sorry, not create, where is it? The add note, uh, we have read functions, right? Get note by ID, get note by title, uh, or get all. Um, we have um, an update and we have a delete. In that case, actually, that's not a real delete. Um, let's actually do this and say hard delete. So a hard delete, uh, also gonna do that by ID. Uh, a hard delete in, and we can actually simply do this also, and be super hard about it and say, delete from notes where ID equals ID, and then simply say ID is ID. Okay, so it's just, just to be completed here. So this will actually hard delete it, which means it will not set a delete stamp, it will actually remove it. So let's try that out maybe and say, you know what, uh, let's do a transaction and say hard delete, uh, and I'll be number one maybe, huh? All right, so see how we still have it here. So if I execute the code now, oops, uh, given values one. Okay, there's an issue here. There's an issue here. And see it. Oh, it's because we're ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, there we go. Okay. Now we still get our uh, uh, right, we're asking for the third one. So so this will still have size output. But if we actually look at the database itself, you will see that, that the first row is really just gone. It's also not retrievable at this point. So it's it's simply um, deleted. So um, that's something that might be interesting if you look into um, certain requirements when users want their data to be deleted. In most cases, it makes sense to keep um, you know data as, as as long as it's possible from you know if you look at size and so on. Anyway, so that that's basically how database interactions work. Uh, you can you know like feel free to play around with this. Uh, either directly in the index or, or uh, however you want to, and um, make sure you um, get some kind of confidence with database transactions, right? Before we jump into, okay, how would I get now get user input uh, into a database? I mean, as you can imagine, this is basically could as well be user input, right? And then things get uh, very, very simple. Uh, we will jump into that in the next session. Uh, for now, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time.